I'm very excited to welcome all the investors, corporate leaders, and startups for Ethom's BFSI Innovation Pitches. I'm Madhu Gupta, Managing Partner at Ethom Venture Partners. We are a deep tech revenue scaler based in Singapore with over 100 B2B global startups in the portfolio. Banking, financial services, and insurance sectors have transformed quite a lot in the last 10 years. The last decade has significantly improved the quality of life for billions of people in developing nations due to transformative innovations such as UPI, digital banking, peer-to-peer -peer lending, and many more. Now, technologies such as AI, ML, blockchain, quantum computing are poised to move mountains and bring unbackable, unthinkable transformations to the industry. These transformative innovations and crazy founders inspire us to showcase their solutions to industry leaders and investors. I know you must be super excited to learn about these innovations, but please hold on. I cannot start this event without in introducing our diverse jury members. I would request our jury members to please introduce themselves. Jury members, please provide a brief 30 seconds introduction. Uh, shall we start with Nitin? Uh, sure, Madhu. Thank you so much. Uh, nice to meet all of you. I'm Nathan. I am based out of Dubai. I have around two decades of experience in digital banking products across the globe, and I've led various industries and companies to develop their innovative digital solutions. So looking forward to the presentation by all the founders, and uh, let's move forward. Good luck to everyone. Great. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Nitin. Um, can we have George? Hello. Uh, good morning from Athens, Greece. Uh, my name is George Panu, and I have uh, over two decades of experience in IT and business. I specialize in leading digital innovation and transformation across banking and financial sectors. Currently, I'm uh, head of uh, Eurobank Innovation Center. And uh, I'm also lecturing uh, in uh, universities and colleges on uh, digital transformation and transformation in general and emerging technologies. Um, I have hands-on experience in critical application uh, that enables me to mentor startups and guide the future of digital finance. Thank you and good luck to everyone. Thank you, George. Uh, Soro? Everyone. Hello, yeah, sorry. I thought you said Sarah, apologies. <laughs> Hi, this is Saurabh from Singapore. I have around two years, 20 years of experience in banking and financial industry, especially fo focusing on digital technology space. Uh, looking forward to hearing the pitches from all of us here. Great, great. Uh, Viren? Hi, good morning and good afternoon. My Viren Mantri, uh, I started uh, technology, cyber, and risk advisory firm. So I'm the newest startup, I would say, as one of your jurors. Uh, prior to this, uh, I've spent a long time with Standard Chartered Bank, almost 17 years. Uh, the, the previous, the last four, uh, heading uh, as CISO for SC Ventures, their incubation arm. Uh, in a span of four years, uh, we moved from uh, incubating two ventures to 23 ventures of all kinds, starting from supply chain, crypto, and number of uh, digital banks as well. So looking forward to hearing your pitches and uh, good luck. Thank you. Amazing. Uh, can we have Sarah? Uh, good morning and good afternoon. This is um, Sarah Dees. Um, I'm a fintech, uh, multiple fintech um, uh, startup um, leader. Um, before that, I was in investment banking with Barclays, um, Goldman Sachs, and uh, BNP Paribas. Um, looking forward to hear all the ideas today. I also work for a company called Carbon13, uh, where I mentor um, startups um, that are focused on uh, climate tech. Um, so a bit of experience on 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 helping teams get from, from zero to hopefully hero, um, and looking forward very much today to, to hear what our uh, startups have to say. Fantastic, Sarah. Uh, Thomas? Hi, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be with you. Uh, I'm based in Singapore as a general manager at a Series C fintech startup called Aspire. Um, I was previously a consultant to the banking industry. In addition, I have various roles as startup advisor and investor. 
Great, 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 Thomas. Uh, Deepak? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Deepak. I started my career in data science and AI domain 18 years back. In those days, it was known as data science. Now, oh, sorry, data analysis. Now it is data science and then AI, then Gen AI. I have worked across the financial domain, started career with HSBC, working right now in banks. But between uh, the, the journey, I worked with uh, Thomson Reuters, Refinitiv and Elsec, which was typically the same company acquired by different, different uh, groups over the time. I read a lot of philosophy and psychology, try to combine it with technology to keep at least human intelligence in loop in, in the era of artificial intelligence. Very excited to hear all the ideas. Looking forward to it. Good luck to everyone. Amazing, amazing. Uh, Soumya? Hi, uh, good afternoon for everyone in, in Asia and good, good morning to people from uh, Europe and the western part of the world. I'm Samir Gupta. I run uh, Infinivol, a uh, data and digital consulting firm, helping uh, BFSI clients in Southeast Asia with their CVM transformation. Prior to uh, starting my own venture, I've been two, in two decades in banking. Last one, big DBS, where I led uh, data transformation for DBS, uh, both data transformation and AI. And as my fellow juror mentioned, transforming analytics into AI, that's what I've led. Uh, very excited to be here, uh, really excited to see all the new startups and looking for new partners, who, the product which I can bring to my clients. I'm always in look, for, look out for new products, so very excited to be here. Great, great, Samir. I, I, I hope you really find you know, some of the amazing startups today. So yeah, great, great uh, happy to have you here. Uh, Soumya Singh. Hello, good morning and good afternoon. Uh, I'm Soumya, I'm part of Cognizant's uh, Business Consulting Group. Uh, I started my career in the banking industry before I moved on to management consulting and IT strategy side of things. Uh, I'm based out of Singapore for the last uh, 14 plus years. And it's very interesting to be at the cusp of history wherein we get to see how technology and the other innovations are driving the industry. Uh, looking forward to the session. And thanks a lot, Pankas and Madhu, for bringing all of us together. And good luck to all the participants. Always happy to have, uh, have you, Soumya. Mahendra? Mahendra? Oh, we don't yeah, have Yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, Mahendra, please go ahead with your intro. Sorry, I had a problem with my microphone. Hi, I no. hope everyone can hear me here. Uh, very good afternoon and good morning to everyone. This is Mahindra from Abu Dhabi. Uh, I work as the head of Fintech Partnerships and Data Analytics as First Abu Dhabi Bank. But prior to this, over the last 25 years, I've been working with several large multinational banks, such as Bank of America, HSBC, Barclays, management consulting firms. And uh, the last, I was heading the corporate banking and innovation practice for Accenture in Southeast Asia. Uh, I've worked with several uh, fintechs and I've actually seen how we can take newer solutions to our clients and have been very happy mentoring a number of fintechs over the last three, four years in Asia. So very excited to be participating in this and good luck to all the participants today. Great, great. Uh, amazing. Uh, do we have Daniel? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Chaplin. Uh, I'm the CEO of the Wealthy VC Club. Uh, we're an angel group from the Silicon Valley. Um, our sweet spot is in uh, positive rounds uh, in disruptive technologies, uh, mainly life sciences, ag tech, mobility, and uh, the space industries. We have a portfolio of uh, 37 companies, uh, including five unicorns. And we're really looking for a, a companies and uh, are passionate about technologies that advance the world in a way that makes it better um, for everyone. Uh, not just to make money. So I'm really happy to be here and uh, see the companies. Great, uh, Daniel. Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, Afro, Zainab, uh, are you guys on the call? Have you joined? Okay, no worries. Maybe they'll join later. Uh, thank you. Uh, so thanks a lot uh, uh, for the wonderful introductions and your support in the next hour. Some housekeeping rules before we start with the first presentation today. 
Please keep yourself muted throughout the event. Raise your digital hand and unmute yourself whenever you want to ask any questions or speak. Please use the chat section for Q&A only. Please don't spam it. All right. So now, now uh, let's start with the first presentation, which is Tokenize. It is a Hong Kong-based startup offering token assessment report to help issuers and purchasers to complete real-world asset tokenization due diligence. And here we go. Welcome, investors and innovators. We are tokenized, and we are dedicated to forging a responsible path for the future of real-world asset tokenization. Now, it is no secret that there are many issues with today's real-world asset tokenization projects. However, there are four in particular that we've identified to be holding this industry back from a flourishing market. Firstly, there is no clear connection between the token and the real-world asset. The token itself holds no legal, valid, or binding enforceable rights, interests, or ownership title. Secondly, the tokens do not comply with law enforcement. Third, there is no proper documentation, and finally, sustainability concerns. While some solutions do exist, they often fall short. For example, local legislations do impose laws to make up for that missing connection between the token and the real-world asset. However, it stunts the accessibility potential of using blockchain technology. Similarly, private and permission blockchains also stunts the full potential benefits of using blockchain technology by being centralized. Now, this is where Tokenize comes in. Our tokenization assessment report, otherwise known as our TAR, completes a technical audit for code security, legal and regulatory compliance assessments to ensure legal validity and enforceability, a 3339 token standard assessment to ensure that the tokens can both be frozen and then recovered, and finally sustainability evaluations to promote carbon neutrality aspirations. Now, our TAR is a comprehensive solution that ensures clear ownership rights, regulatory compliance, and, enforce and environmental responsibility. Now, the real-world asset tokenization market is currently exploding. It's projected to reach a staggering 30.1 trillion US dollars by the year of 2034. This presents a massive opportunity for us because we do not actually believe that Tokenize has a real market competitor. While Certic can be perceived to be a competitor because they focus on smart contract audits, Tokenize occupies a unique niche by not only considering the tech aspect, but also the legal and regulatory components. This unique positioning allows Tokenize to expect similar or even greater deal flows than Certic. Now, our solution is not just theoretical, but it has actually been put into action with four successful projects completed, including a Hong Kong listed company, game company, and an asset backed securitization project. Now, let's take a look at our revenue streams briefly and our financial projections. So, our financial projections show a consistent revenue growth. We are also on track to be positive in 2024 and climb steadily thereafter. We also expect a healthy, healthy margins and controlled operating expenses. We are actually currently in discussions with Mazari Capital, which is a Dubai private um, investment firm for a 500,000 US dollar investment at a 10 million US dollar post money valuation. On top of that, our revenues in the last six months exceed 300,000 US dollars. Here is a roadmap that outlines our commitment to innovation uh, with plans to leverage AI for even better uh, efficiency and scalability in the future. Now, our team is uniquely positioned to tackle this challenge. I'm currently a JD student, and additionally, we are backed by a powerhouse of highly experienced financial professionals and lawyers in tech, corporate finance, and litigation. Thank you so much for your time. Please join us in shaping a responsible future for tokenization and unlock the full potential of real-world asset tokenization. Thank you. Amazing, Megan. So we have Megan from Tokenize to answer your questions. So jury members, please uh, ask your questions. Yeah, hi, this is here. Um, thing I wanted to check with is, um, have you identified what sort of use cases or which sort of products you're looking to actually work into this space? Um, is it only in the personal banking or consumer banking space or is it in the corporate banking space? wanted to just understand how it is. 
I mean, I think it's actually useful in all sort of spaces. I think um, tokenization will definitely benefit any of the traditional financial products because it makes it a lot more accessible. It makes it more li liquid, whereas um, traditional Could you give financial... an example where you can apply this? Um, sure. So we actually did uh, bonds with uh, CITD, which is the listed company that we <clears throat> were talking about. And uh, so we issued these tokens for them. And that would be our case study. I think we also submitted a case study um, for that as well. Okay, thanks. Megan, Any hi. Other questions? This is Viren. Yeah, Viren. Hi. hi. That was a good presentation. Uh, Thank you. Some of the slides I couldn't capture quickly. Uh, and one of the slides you rightly pointed out the limitations of uh, private blockchains. Mm. Now, uh, tokenization project that you completed or are in the process with CITD, could you disclose which blockchains are you using? That is number one. Uh, yeah. Number two is uh, you mentioned about token smart audits and smart contract certifications as well. Do you, as a company, would do both? Do you do it yourself or would you engage a third party auditors to audit your token due diligence and to audit your smart contracts uh, security? That is number two. Okay, uh, let me answer the second question first. So we are actually the third party that is making these audits for the tech portion. We actually have uh, Certic as one of, we have hired Certic. So we often pay them to do the tech audit specifically. Um, in terms of the law opinions and the regulatory opinions and smart contracts that is issued by the uh, law firm that we will work with. And that is how, so we will look over um, all of the documentation that is given to us. And we are the third party that audits it, uh, not audit, assesses it actually, because we're okay. not doing financial audits, but yes. And then for your first question, which uh, blockchain we're using, we actually, we've moved to, um, I, th I think it's Tone, tone View. What Sorry, I'm laughing right now, but <clears throat> yes, we, okay. we just said to you. Sorry, yeah. We could cover it that later. I mean, you could all. Mm -hmm. either. Yeah, so yeah. I'm really talking right now, but uh, yeah, I do. I I can let you know the two blockchains that we've moved from and we were at before. Yeah. Uh, the only reason for asking that question is if you have already selected one or two or what a number of blockchains, uh, I would want to know later why were why were they selected and that what's your longer term game plan. Right. Okay, so uh, sorry to build on what you just said, Megan. Uh, what's great about what? Oh, I'm, yes. I'm I'm extremely sorry, but since we have very limited time, and you want we and we want to cover everything within the given time, so mm -hmm. can you please take this question offline, so that yeah. we can start with the uh, next presentation? Uh, maybe you can answer in the chat section, Megan. Sure, sure. I can do okay, that. and Thank jury you. members, if you have more questions, please feel free to put them in the chat section, and Megan would be happy to answer them. Okay. All right. So um, we have next startup, which is Velotix. It is a U.S. headquartered AI-powered data security platform supporting BFSI leaders in Europe and Asia. And here we go. Data is everywhere, and it's growing fast. By 2025, we'll have over 181 zettabytes of data. But as data grows, so do regulations, including GDPR and other privacy restrictions. So how do enterprises keep up? That's the question Deutsche Bank sought to answer when they searched for a data security design partner. They wanted to speed up access to data from months to minutes. They wanted to identify and monitor who has access to sensitive data and they sought to manage and secure both structured and unstructured data with one tool. No existing data security solution met their business requirements, and so, in 2021, Velotix was born. The Velotix AI-powered data security platform allows you to discover, visualize, and use your data securely and compliantly. We provide protection, access, and security throughout the entire security lifecycle. 
Firstly, Velotix discovers, organizes, and visualizes your data. Next, our platform enables self-service data access, reducing data access time from months to minutes. AI recommendations learn from historical requests, making sure you grant access according to company policy. Our AI engine creates, maintains, and enforces your policy database. We are the only data security platform, DSP, to use deep planning methods to build and enforce your policy rulebook, providing continuous monitoring for policy drifts and dark data. Now, we are planning to expand our DSP beyond and incorporate unique Gen AI capabilities. Using cutting-edge Gen AI methods, Velotix will bring a conversational touch to data governance and security. We're integrating Gen AI to create the first conversational DSP, enabling knowledge sharing across your enterprise. Simply ask your Gen AI interface about data access or compliance issues to get detailed insights and detect policy conflicts. Today, we're a growing team with expertise in data, cutting-edge AI capabilities, and business development. Velotix is already backed up by top-notch VCs, including Capri Ventures and Plug and Play, and corporate VCs like Barclays Bank. We're on a mission to ensure the safest and securest enterprise data ecosystems, and that's exactly what we do. We already partner with only the best. Velotix is already acknowledged and market validated. So when it comes to gaining faster data access while remaining policy compliant, the Velotix Data Security Platform is your solution. <laughs> Velotix, unlock the power of your data. Fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to listen that you have already partnered with the best in the industry and we are one of them. <laughs> so great to know, know that we are also partners <laughs> with, with you guys. So we have Amir here to answer your questions, uh, Judy member. So please uh, go ahead with your questions. Uh, hi, everyone. So I think the, the video is pretty effective in describing what the product does. Could you elaborate a bit more on your traction and how many clients are using it and how they're using it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So uh, we have multiple clients all over the world uh, focused on the US and Asia and other territories. Uh, over, uh, I can't say exactly how many customers, but uh, over 10 customers that are using the, the solutions. Obviously, all the customers are uh, big enterprises, uh, mostly banks, financial institutions, very data-driven organizations, let's say that. How are your revenues at this point of time? I mean, what's your revenues for this year and what are your projections as you go ahead and which other markets are you looking to actually explore into? Yeah, great question. So uh, we're getting closer to the seven digits. Uh, that's our goal. And uh, to cross that um, uh, over the year 2024, that's our goal. Uh, as I mentioned, we're mostly focused on the BFSI market, uh, but we're very open to other data-driven organizations such as utilities, telecom companies, oil and gas, uh, healthcare as well. Uh, as of now, our traction, most traction has been on the banking financial insurance companies. So one quick question again on this is in terms of uh, data residency sort of issues or in, term, in terms of hosting cases as some jurisdictions that are having, what's your view and how are you actually looking to tackle those as you scale up? Yeah, so we have both uh, on-prem and a SaaS offering. So for our more traditional customers, it's on-prem uh, hosting, which means it's under their security without any access to the outside world. So we don't find any issues with that. Obviously, we're working with Deutsche Bank and other large organizations, which are very traditional in nature. Great, right. Fantastic. Uh, guys, you may be seeing poll on your screen. Please feel free to uh, respond to that. And uh, starting with our third have. presentation. Carol. So starting with our third presentation, Ares Applied Technology, a Singapore-based startup offering quantum security solutions to the BFSI leaders. And here Hi. we go. Ares Applied Technology is a deep tech startup focused on addressing one of the most critical challenges facing all organizations today, quantum computing's impact on cybersecurity. The problem statement that we are trying to solve is that quantum computers could potentially break the current cryptographic methods, leading to data breaches, financial losses, and irreparable damage to trust for the major BFSI leaders. Every supply technology provides a comprehensive quantum security solution to the financial services leaders designed to protect against these emerging quantum threats. 
Our proprietary technology includes quantum-resistant algorithms, post-quantum cryptography which are specifically engineered to withstand the computational power of quantum computers. These patented solutions provide future-proof encryption, ensuring that even as quantum technology evolves, the data and digital assets of our BFSI clients remain secure. Our approach is proactive, enabling organizations to upgrade their security infrastructure before quantum threats materialize. Our value proposition is that our encryption methods are backed by the latest patented technologies, including hardware compatible solutions. They are AI proof, they provide an additional layer of security. By adopting our quantum security solutions, organizations can not only safeguard their critical data, their reputation, but also gain a competitive edge by being an early, early adopter of future proof technology. Avis has built a quantum encryption solution to this end, LineGuard. And what makes LineGuard unique? Our value proposition lies in our commitment for future proving your data security. With LineGuard, you gain quantum resistant encryption, which ensures your data remains safe from both current and future cyber threats. Cross compatible platform, which, whether you are the desktop, tablet, mobile device, we are cross platform compatible and provide seamless, consistent protection across all platforms. LineGuard provides ease of use, and despite its advanced technology, LineGuard is incredibly user friendly. Uh, with a few clicks, it allows anyone to encrypt and decrypt their data. LineGuard is also designed to be highly scalable to meet uh, all the needs of both individuals and businesses, offering flexible solutions that are even cloud compatible. And in the future, LineGuard will be enhanced with hardware and quantum safe Bluetooth capabilities. Our success stories is that we have partnered and are supported by leading partners and agencies, including Enterprise Singapore. NUS Enterprise, CyberSG TIG Center, and Shibuya Startup Support in Japan. Our innovative approach has been recognized by industry leaders, and we have been featured in top tech and cybersecurity events like Gulfware, Switch, Cybersecurity World Asia, Sushi Tech Tokyo, further validating our solution and market relevance. We have also collaborated with PIQL or PICO and the Arctic World Archive a European Union supported company which, which has enabled us to gain more traction, customer insights and expand our solutions worldwide. We will be embarking on a key POC with the Singapore National Quantum Safe Network. As part of this POC or proof of concept, we are collaborating further to integrate our quantum solution with a key quantum key distribution technology. The team is our greatest asset. Lim Ming Liang, our CTO and co-founder, is a graduate of the National University of Singapore with a degree in applied mathematics. He has patented several groundbreaking encryption technologies, including an AI encryption driven method. Myself, I'm Ken, I'm CEO and co founder, and I have 15 years of experience in banking product strategy and digital banking platforms. With Bernard Su, our CEO and co founder, he has 20 years of experience in wealth management and fintech, including leadership roles at Sandchart and UOB. Together, our team brings a unique blend of technical expertise and industry knowledge. To date, we have successfully raised 185,000 US dollars in seed funding, which has enabled us to develop our core technology and secure early partnerships. This funding was secured from Enterprise Singapore through its stringent deep tech proof of concept program just in the first two months of our operations. We are now seeking USD 1 million in our next funding round to accelerate product development, expand our market reach, and strengthen our intellectual property portfolio and go to market partnerships. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Um, so, jury members, we have Ken here to answer your questions. Hey, Ken, this is Viren again. Uh, Hi. Ken, by saying uh, your land guard does post quantum or quantum resistant encryption, uh, are you suggesting that you've already tested against the recently released NIST PQCs? Uh, yes, our methodology was one of the NIST uh, uh, or similar to one of the uh, solutions that was submitted at NIST. Okay. And uh, it has been uh, researched and developed over 15 years. Uh, there are many white papers that have uh, and crypto analysis that has been uh, done on the methodology that we are using. And we have uh, managed to patent it uh, in different applications. Uh, we have a symmetric uh, encryption with AI patent in the US, Japan, and Singapore. We have also um, recently uh, been awarded uh, the patent for wave transmission. And our patent is uh, using Dalfentin equations as an algorithm. 
And uh, this uh, particular form of encryption, right, um, uses the theory of undecidability. And okay. it is also AI proof. Uh, it's uh, unsolvable equations. It has okay. been researched let me, uh, extensively. Uh, let me get to the next one. So your target market is not necessarily banks and financial institutions, right? It could be technology vendors as well. Precisely. The providers. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. All right, understood. We'll we'll talk more later. I just wanted Nidhi? to get Ken, is your yeah, view to have this as a product in itself or a licensing view going forward? We have uh, developed the software, uh, Windows based, uh, and we are uh, building it on mobile, iOS, and Android, which is a very very unique approach, uh, which none of our, the other quantum uh, solutions provider are doing. Uh, in doing so, we are trying to, um, you know, get more adoption. Uh, I won't rule out that the licensing of our technology is, uh, you know, something that we will not uh, embark on. Uh, is that right now we are building the solutions first, uh, and we will gradually move into licensing because I see a lot of interest in the market for newer algorithms and uh, methodologies. Yes. Early days. Yes. Understood. Can I ask a quick question and you can answer later. Can uh, when do you think is the Q day approaching? Within five years. Okay. Great. Maybe we can take more questions in the uh, chat section and moving to the next presentation, which is Olive Gaia. It is an AI powered platform for decarbonization, transition financing, and ESG risk management. And here we We're go. We're excited to show you how Olive Gaia is revolutionizing decarbonization, transition financing, and ESG risk management for financial institutions. Olive Guy is a climate tech startup born in the UAE with a mission to empower businesses to lead the charge in climate action. Since our inception in 2022, we've partnered with some of the UAE's largest government and private entities, earning recognition from global giants for our innovations and impact. The financial sector is sitting on a ticking time bomb of carbon risk. Banks worldwide hold an astounding $4.6 trillion in carbon intensive assets. If the transition to net zero isn't managed effectively, potential losses could skyrocket to $20 trillion. The pressure to decarbonize is relentless, yet the tools available are failing. Today, over 60% of the emissions data that financial institutions use is based on estimations, causing significant inaccuracies. Only 25% of the world's top banks adhere to PCAF standards, leading to inconsistent disclosures. Even worse, the current data collection process takes six to nine months, crippling decision-making and stalling climate action. That's why we developed Zero, our game-changing AI-driven SaaS platform designed to solve the climate action challenge. Zero is not just another ESG reporting tool, it's the next generation platform that automates the entire decarbonization journey and seamlessly integrates carbon and ESG risk management into a single unified solution. Zero delivers real-time insights, enabling financial institutions to measure, manage, reduce, and report emissions across all scopes, including the notoriously complex finance emissions. But Zero goes beyond carbon. It covers comprehensive ESG metrics, providing audit proof and compliance-ready tracking and reporting. Our platform supports financial institutions with AI-driven portfolio optimization, transition financing, decarbonization roadmaps with budgeting, and extensive supply chain and investing engagement, making ESG management seamless and actionable. Zero redefines what's possible in carbon and ESG management. Our platform's superior data quality combined with real-time access to global databases ensures the highest level of accuracy effectively managing carbon exposures. With over 500 sector-specific decarbonization levers and advanced AI algorithms, Zero identifies the most effective actions, optimizes resource allocation, and drives smarter investment decisions. The carbon management market is set to explode, doubling to $21 billion in the next five years. Olive Gaia is poised to capture a significant share, targeting the rapidly growing EMEA and APAC markets with a projected cumulative ARR of $65 million in the next five years. 
Zero is an industry agnostic, audit ready, and action oriented platform. Unlike other market solutions, Zero goes beyond standard ESG reporting and carbon accounting by leveraging cutting edge innovation to deliver high impact solution driven tools for transition financing, portfolio optimization, and credible, economically viable net zero strategies, addressing critical gaps in the market today. Our tired subscription model with additional consulting services has, have positioned us as a trusted partner in our clients' net zero journeys, securing a solid pipeline and accelerating the onboarding of clients onto zero. Following a successful $1.2 million seed round, we are now seeking $2.5 million in bridge funding to scale our operations. This investment will extend our market reach, enabling us to deliver substantial growth and a comprehensive ESG suite to a growing client base. Thank you very much. Amazing. So we have Jessica and Vivek to answer your question. Sarah, maybe you can go ahead with your question. Sure, no problem. Um, your client base, obviously, what do they, you know, what's the user journey? How much information do they need to give you? Like, what's the onboarding process? Um, um, often, a lot of these platforms I've worked with, probably 10, um, a, a lot of them that the, the, you're only as good as the as kind of the data that's submitted. And sometimes that's the tricky part on on getting clients to to actually just engage. Um, so, yes, I'm just curious on on like what's different about your platform and how how the user journey is. Yeah, we ensure that the user journey is, is absolutely seamless. Um, so we uh, take a very hands-on approach into the onboarding um, in particular. So the data collection can happen in various different ways. Um, we integrate fully with existing ERP system through APIs. So data can be fetched automatically, basically from existing ERPs within the company. Um, alternatively, for certain maybe data points or whenever you know ERP systems are not there um, in the company, there are several ways in which, again, the data can be fetched into the platform. One is, of course, very simply uh, manual, manually input the data on the platform uh, UI. Um, otherwise, we have directly um, through uh, natural language processing, basically, uh, the organization can just dump uh, PDFs, JPEGs, or um, invoices, purchase orders into the platform. And again, through AI, we're able to capture the data, make sense of the data, and categorize basically the data under the right uh, scope of emission or the asset where basically the, um, the emissions are coming from. All of these is of course following the GAG protocol. So in the onboarding process itself, we help you know, the uh, customer identify you know, which departments might be the owner the owners of this data and how to best basically go about, you know, collecting the data. What are the data points that can be collected? Mm -hmm. Always, of course, looking at activity-based uh, uh, data first. Great, thank you. Um, Terry or Sami, who wants to go next? Go next. Um, thank you. I was wondering if you could uh, quickly elaborate on your actual data sources for the scope one to three emission data and how you validate that data. Absolutely. So um, we have um, we leverage, of course, a global databases uh, like DEFRA, EPA, uh, IFI. When it comes to data gaps, which might be there, especially when it comes to scope three emissions, we made sure to uh, basically integrate with some uh, global databases um, with uh, asset level emission data from approximately six, uh, 65,000 companies. Uh, we have also over 334,000 asset um, emission data from asset impact. Uh, we have also reported an estimated emission data from over 15,000 listed entities uh, from Impact Cubed and CDP. And again, um, key financial data of over 15,000 listed entities from FactSet. So again, we ensure that we have you know, all the tools available to help organizations, not just with the right emission factors, but also whenever there is a gap in the data collection, especially across scope three emissions or finance emission in particular, we are able again to gather the data and ensure that the highest quality um, score is achieved um, in line with PCAF. Great. 
Um, Samir, can we have your question in the chat section, please? Since we, we will yeah. have to move to the next presentation. I'm, I'm really, really sorry about, about that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see uh, such an active pa uh, participation from all the jury members. So yeah, moving to the next presentation, uh, which is from Autonomy. It's a US-based startup, which is ensuring logistics companies to protect from financial losses due to shipment delays. And here we go. With I'm Jan Siwan, co-founder of Autonomy. Autonomy is first to market to bring parametric delay insurance to the cargo and logistics space. So let me give you some context. So globally, more than 24 trillion worth of commodities, goods and assets are produced and transported every year. Since last year, from six days, we see an increase for, to 8.3 days of delay in ocean that translated in nearly half a billion of ocean containers stuck at sea, creating a lot of the business interruption risks. That's due to a number of global X risk. On the macro side, geopolitics, climate risk, regulation, pandemic have been uh, corporates. On the micro and localized side, a lot of infrastructure collision risk, such as Baltimore collapse, human manual errors, cyber attacks, and the hyper growth that's been essentially non-sustained by the supply chain globally. In order to mitigate those risks, what do you do? Well, you use cargo insurance. Cargo insurance, in few words, helps you mitigate physical loss and damage risks, general average, and also third-party liabilities. And this is a very big market, bound to be growing in exceed of $106 billion in the next 10 years. And what's flabbergasting is more than 90% of containers and cargo are uninsured or uninsured. And in the context of our conversation, what's even more surprising and frustrating is delay are completely excluded from all cargo insurance policies. So that's why we come in. Autonomy is the first ever insurtech agency bringing parametric delay insurance to the supply chain business. We're backed by best-in-class underwriter syndicates and carriers, and we're deployed in North America, South America, and Asia Pacific. Our customers are in key and critical industries such as life science pharmaceuticals, perishable exports, aviation aerospace, semiconductors, high-tech, critical automotive and other specialized transportation space. In terms of our product, very proud to be bringing the first ever parametric cargo delay insurance, um, which is actually only uh, focused on transient time delay, bring a lot of transparency, speed and trust to the process. We also very much committed to bring the best of the technology to the space. We can quote in milliseconds thanks to machine learning and AI. We process claims 24 to 25x faster than the industry thanks to smart contract. And we're very much, very much committed to having a lot of the, the API technology deployed to communicate better with our customers and our stakeholders. For our commercial traction, we currently have more than 10 customers. Here's a quick sample. And projecting nearly 3.8 million in top line revenue. And this is just a sample of the large logos and corporate partners that we're working with in order to make it happen. And in order to support that accelerated growth, we're currently fundraising. So we're very proud to be part of this conversation in order to fundraise with this community uh, a 2.5 million rounds uh, on a convertible note, 20% discount with a pre-money of 12.5 million, uh, already uh, lead by ATX Ventures. We want to attract the best of the strategic fintech, insurtech, and logtech investor in order to make it around a success. And with that, you know, I wanted to thank you, and I'm open to take any of your questions. Thanks a lot. Perfect. So we have Wilfred from Autonomy to answer your questions. Yeah, hi, Nathan, I think... Uh, go this... ahead. Oh. Yes, hi. Go ahead. Hi, Wilfred. So... I noticed that uh, you're in a space where there are a lot of incumbents already doing insurance. What stops them from coming after this area where you have 90% exposure, which is sort of, you know, ready as a market to capture? Um, for the incumbents, as you know, most of the innovations are not coming from your incumbent company. Right, they they may have an innovation department within a company within the corporate, but 
more likely than not, nothing really come out of it. Um, this is a very, very niche product that we create, right? We are focusing on one item, which is delay as a pearl, that has been sitting there for 350 years. So because of technology and, you know, our know-how, it's a lot easier for a small shop like us to come up with a very niche and particular product and then sell it back on to the larger insurance company. So you have about 10 clients, and I won't take too much time, but uh, how did that conversation go? Did it go directly to them, or did it go through an intermediate? So our business model is B2B2C. Uh, we have two channel styles. So one is your traditional brokerage house, right? Your marsh. Uh, as you see, you know, they are the number one in marine insurance. Your marsh, your Aon, and then is your 3PLs, your logistic partners because they hold that relationship directly with the shipper. So, and it also, they create incentives for them to sell, right? It's, it's, it's an insurance product. So, and also, because insurance is a very highly regulated uh, business. So it depends on jurisdiction. If we are licensed to talk directly to the end user, or we have to go through, uh, you know, a broker of license. So it really depends on the, on the location, on the jurisdiction. As a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Can we have one quick question from Mahendra? Yeah, so a very quick one is in which, which platforms are you looking to collaborate with, uh, especially given the trade uh, space is pretty uh, uh, very big and massive? And also in terms of what are your, which markets are you looking to scale into or which are uh, also a part of your roadmap? Right, so the first question, uh, when you ask, platform could you elaborate a little bit exactly so I mean, what sense, uh, are, are you connected with are you already participating in an embedded model with some platforms where either banks or maybe other fintech or ecosystems where uh, where this can be purchased and it can be applied from a trade transaction perspective whether it's been there or it's already part of your roadmap and the second one is a market right. part yep okay so uh quickly we are actually we are going to be launched under Marsh in the insurance platforms called Insurity. So that's one. So that's where the Marsh relationship coming coming from. And then the roadmap, uh, APAC. APAC is where what we're looking at. If you can see, you know, the top nine out of 10 busiest ports in the world sit in APAC, right? So this is a technology coming from the state, but, you know, the application is in, is in APAC. That's where all the trade routes manufacturing, exporting goods, and also importing materials, uh, you know, to, to, to the world trade in this region. So, you know, India, we're already live. Uh, it's a huge market. They do a lot of e-commerce. It's a booming industry. So we also tap into the, you know, domestic uh, air flight delay on, on cargo. Perfect. Uh, maybe we can have more questions in the chat section. And uh, let's move to the next one now. Next, so next startup is Algochain. It is it is a Hong Kong based algo trading platform. And here we go. Hello everyone, my name is Tony, the founder of Algochain. Algochain is a Hong Kong based fintech company. We developed a one stop platform for learning, developing, testing, executing, and investing on trading bots. Our vision is to help people to do investment in a more scientific and automatic way. In fact there has been a global trend in computational finance. In US, there are already over 70% of daily stock transactions are driven by computer programs. However, in Asia, the market adoption rate is still around 10 to 20%. We are here to change that. There are several market pain points for the wealth management industry. As a retail investor, it is almost impossible to automate and monitor the financial market all the time. Also, Many traditional funds are unfavorable to low-income retails due to the high entry amount and long investment lock-in period. It is also a factor leading to the wealth inequality in our society. On the other hand, financial institutions also encounter the difficulty for talent acquisition. Therefore, we developed Algogin, which is a decentralized platform to connect different market stakeholders together. For professional investors, 
we provide data and tools for them to conduct in-depth financial research. When they feel confident about the backtest results, they can easily deploy to their broker account for real trading. On top of that, if their performance passes our quality tests, it can be listed on our marketplace to showcase to potential investors. For financial institutions, they can choose any trading algorithms that they would like to partner with. It can save the cost from direct hiring, and all investment performance are proven using blockchain technology. Furthermore, for general retails, they can choose any trading bots that they would like to use. All transactions will automatically happen in their broker account. They can deposit and withdraw capital at any time. They can also start and stop the trading bots anytime, so the whole process is fully feasible, automatic and transparent. The broker account itself is already a fund. In fact, we have various solutions covering the whole investment cycle. We aim to democratize the whole institutional investment process to all market participants. For example, we have a very powerful research lab that contains more than 20 years of ready-to-use data sets such as market data, news, weather, social media, etc. It enables our users to explore any kind of trading strategy that they can imagine. We also partner with more than 20 brokerage firms and crypto exchanges, so our users can easily plug in different trading bots to their personal account and manage multiple securities accounts in a single platform. Here is another B2B use case to co-launch a quant fund with an asset management company. Our solutions are highly recognized in the market with more than 30 industrial awards, including the first place in Global Fintech Award presented by Monetary Authority of Singapore last year. We are now raising 2 million USD and looking for potential investors and business collaboration. Please feel free to reach me out if any one of you are interested. That's all for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So we have Tony here to answer your question. Somyam, please go. Yeah, hi, go Tony. With your question. Yeah. Thanks for the hi. presentation. Quite insightful. Uh, I just have uh, a question regarding like uh, as you get into the new portals, what kind of a regulatory challenge do you foresee or uh, kind of discussion that you have with the regulatory bodies in APAC particularly? Uh, do, you, do you mean about the current challenge that we are facing, right? Right. And primarily from the regulation or the regulatory mandates that we see in the region, are there any such uh, restriction or mandates that you need to follow as you introduce the new models? Uh, actually, from our experience in Hong Kong, uh, actually, we talked to like uh, HKMA and HKSFC. Actually, we are we we are exempt from those uh, license requirements. Uh, why we we are we we are we are, uh, we can do that is that uh, so for example when our user they are interested in uh, using a particular trading algorithm so they don't really need to deposit the money on our company so they just put uh their money uh in those brokerage firms that we already partner with like interactive broker finance etc so we just uh based on the the trading gateway and to execute the trade to to their brokerage account. And secondly, uh, and and therefore we, we are not classified as an asset management uh, company. And secondly, uh, before we launch the portal, we need to we, we need to partner with a local uh, uh license firm, uh like like they, they provide the the RIC service. Okay, and uh, uh, can I know like uh, in case you're looking at a back market, so which are some of these licensing uh, firm? I mean, what kind of firms are this? Uh, in Hong Kong, we, we already uh, collaborate with several uh, uh, type SFC type for licensing of uh, a firm like uh, the, the advisory, advisory uh, company and, and also the asset management company. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, we can have, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Somia. Uh, we can have one more question from uh, Thomas. Hi, thanks. Uh, so really interesting product that you're building. Uh, I think in, in some ways it, it is trying to be like a better sort of all-in-one version of a lot of the tools that um, your users are already using. Uh, can you elaborate on the types of users that are going to gravitate towards your platform and how your user growth currently looks? 
Uh, we have uh, several target users. For example, uh, we, we actually serve for both uh, B2B and also B2C customers. So for B2C, uh, we have some uh, professional traders who already have their own trading idea and also the coding ability to develop the trading algorithm by themselves. And we also uh, provide some ready-to-use uh, trading algorithm for those uh, general retailers. And for B2B, we, we actually partner with some uh, brokerage firm and also crypto exchange. And the second uh, uh, major customer is those uh, asset management company, family office, and also some proprietary trading firm. And right now for B2B, we have already partnered with more than 30 financial institutions uh, uh, across the world uh, from Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, South Korea, and, and also Dubai. And for B2C parts, uh, our, commun um, our community currently have around 5,000 users globally as well. Thank you. Um, uh, I know, Viren, you have a question, but I think we won't, we won't be able to have that uh, now. Maybe you can put that in the chat section, please. I, I've already put that. Yeah. So, okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Viren. Um, so next presentation is from Tres. It is a US and India-based startup securing BFSI leaders against credit risk. Hi, I'm Sonny Gabriel, CEO and co-founder of Trace. We are transforming risk management by delivering actionable insights from unstructured data, empowering financial institutions with AI-driven tools for early portfolio risk detection. Now, why does this matter? The global commercial lending space is rapidly growing, expected to hit 30 trillion by 2030 from 9 trillion in 2020, with portfolio losses also projected to reach 600 billion. As loan delinquencies rise, early risk monitoring is more critical than ever to minimize these escalating risk. Now, here's a critical fact. 90% of data generated about a business today is unstructured, found in places like news, social media, and review platforms. Yet, lenders are still primarily making risk decisions based on the remaining 10%, which is structured financial data like bureau reports and financial statements. Which leads us to the issue we are addressing. That current portfolio monitoring systems rely heavily on lagging structured data, ignoring unstructured data, which often holds early signals of business distress. Now the challenge, too much of data, too little time, and no way to quantify it. Trace solves this by using large language models to analyze various data sources, detecting red flags, and summarizing the insights into a time series scorecard called the Business Sentiment Index or the BSI that integrates into existing workflows. The entire process is automated with alerts and reports, so users get actionable insights without needing to log in daily. Trace automatically connects to public unstructured data sources, applying large language models to compute the daily business sentiment index. It's multilingual and available as a web application or API. To monitor a business with trace, simply input the business name and address. Users receive daily automated updates, including BSI trends and red flag alerts. Trace can also go one step further and provide a comprehensive early warning risk index, or EWR, by integrating structured financial data with the BSI from unstructured data offering a holistic view of business risk. This is typically a bespoke implementation. Trace is an early warning system that helps lenders identify and mitigate potential risk early, enhancing risk management and improving operational efficiency through automated monitoring. The total addressable market for commercial lending use cases alone is 60 billion based on our revenue model. The target serviceable obtainable market within this is 4.8 billion. Our revenue model includes a subscription fee and an API fee. For cloud deployments, we offer both options. For on-prem deployments, we use a managed services model. Our GDM strategy includes partnering with strategic sales and technology alliance partners, such as platform providers, API hubs, and cloud hyperscalers. We are targeting over 1,000 community banks and credit unions with significant commercial lending portfolios. Currently, we focus primarily on digital marketing channels. We currently have seven clients in the US, Germany, and India with six pilots and several demos planned. We're also exploring partnership with fintechs, BFSI services firms, and regulatory consulting firms. While Moody's Analytics offers a similar score and targets mid-market and above, we focus on financial institutions with commercial lending under 10 billion. Our key differentiators are end-to-end -end automation, agility, and cost effectiveness. We operate in a niche market with ample opportunity and a strong value proposition. With our initial traction, we aim to expand trace to more customers and we are raising a million dollars to achieve an ARR of 1 million by 2025. The funds will support platform rollout and boost our sales and marketing efforts. 
Our team includes Geeta, who is the CTO, and Joe, the CAO, with backgrounds in IT and commercial lending credit risk, respectively. We also have a 10-member product development team in India and an experienced advisory board of risk veterans from major global banks. Thank you for your time. We look forward to connecting with interested parties. Great, great. So we have Sony here to answer your questions. Sony, hi, Viren here. I was not able to understand. Uh, how do you understand context and relationships between data sets to derive risk intelligence, uh, especially if you have structured, unstructured, internal and external data, right? So exactly would help. Thanks, Viren. So the primary use case, like the business sentiment index, is just looking at publicly available information, right? So what we do is, for a given a business name, we go and pull all sorts of news, social media reviews, any kind of unstructured data they share on the business, and we convert that into a score. Think of it like a Sybil score or a FICO score, but based on all the footprint. More of a sentiment than a risk because you're not putting financials into the game. Now, when I combine that, I create logistic regression model or the appropriate model where I combine financial with BSI. And that's a more holistic because I'm looking at both structured data as well as unstructured data. Hmm. Why would I use your product? What will compel me to, I need something like this. So what, see, typically, if you look at the lending situation, you actually rely primarily on financial data, your bureau reports, which comes monthly your financial data or internal performance data. You're still missing out on all the signals that you can get early. Say you are giving a working capital to a restaurant. The reviews are pretty bad. It's a matter of time before their revenue gets impacted, but you don't know that yet. By the time Bureau reports it, it's too late. You have that six months, maybe a quarter or even more windows to say that okay, things are going bad here. I need to take action now. Okay. Uh, we can have one more quick question from Samir. Sorry. Hi, Sony. Uh, very good presentation. One quick question. How do you handle uh, false propaganda, rumors, paid reviews? Good question. So the thing is the weightage for the BSI is primarily from news, right? We monitor social media and review platforms for a reason because you get that's the smoke before the fire. So you get those leading uh, sometimes months, weeks before it becomes into the news. And we have done many case studies. We have seen that much before news picked it up, there were local chatter going on, right? Now, it doesn't impact the score as much because for this specific reason that he mentioned. But at the same time, it's important to know what's being talked about about the company. Okay, thank you. Great. Um, apologies, Thomas and Mahindra. Can you please put your questions in the uh, chat section so that we can move ahead with the next presentation? So the next presentation is from Taurus. Taurus is a SaaS intelligence platform for improving payment business profitability. Hi, I'm Kirill, the co-founder and CEO of Taurus, SaaS intelligence platform for banks and fintechs to enhance their profits on card transactions. We enable card players to analyze, optimize, and predict the cost toward card schemes like Visa and MasterCard, and thus improve their transactional profitability by double-digit numbers. There are over 30,000 payment players globally, which generate over half a trillion of dollars of annual revenues, and this keeps on growing double-digit. But payment margins are under severe pressure these days, Competition is increasing, as are the costs. So in order to be competitive yet profitable, banks need to be cost efficient. And there is a large area of costs which is poorly managed these days. The ones related to the fees charged by card networks like Visa and MasterCard. And it creates confusion among banks and fintechs. And this confusion costs them billions annually in excessive charges and lost revenues due to suboptimal pricing of their products. But analyzing this data better could help them to optimize their profitability. And Taurus is the plug and play solution for this problem. We collect the same raw data banks receive from the networks and provide insights to better manage these costs and optimize their product pricing. And our customers get results within seconds rather than spending days and weeks drilling through raw data. Our models cover over 40 markets in Europe and Asia, and they keep on evolving, providing over 98% prediction accuracy. We already have early adopters 
in Europe and in Asia. And Taurus Solution helps them to save from hundreds of thousands up to millions of annual excessive costs, as well as improve their transactional profitability by double or even triple digit numbers. We have an unfair advantage. This is the decades of industry experience spent in banks, core networks, processors, consultancies, which was productized using cutting edge technologies. Our sweet spot is 20,000 mid-sized banks and fintechs, because they prefer to buy SaaS solutions from the outside rather than build that in-house. Majority of our revenues come from monthly quarterly subscription fees, and the average annual ticket so far is around 100K USD. We now have 10 paying customers generating around a million of annual recurring revenues. We're cash positive, and we've been recently recognized by MasterCard and Sifted, and also received Startup of the Year award by MPE, one of the largest payment shows in Europe. And this is just the beginning of our journey. Reach out to, to know more, and let's, pay, let's make payment industry a really data-driven one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. So we have Kirill on the call to answer. Mahindra, please go ahead with your yeah. question. Yeah, hi. So in terms of the, the car analytics uh, capabilities that you're showcasing and uh, your efficiencies, which banks have you partnered with and what sort of results have you actually seen? That's one. And also in terms of your scaling roadmap, which sort of markets are you looking to get into and how? Yep, yep. Um, so we focus both banks and non-banking institutions. So the, the key thing is they're directly connected to Visa MasterCard from the banking side. I guess one of the largest is Bank Acela from Italy. So we help them to daily calculate the transactional costs for their portfolio of 400,000 merchants. So we process a few million transactions a day. Um, uh, we are kind of, we're concentrated here in, in Europe. So that's why Europe is the, the first market we started with. Uh, as a kind of in a semi bootstrapping mode, we will revolve into other markets in many cases through partnerships, like we're doing right now with the Japanese market. So we're partnering with one of the large processor and system integrators there. So we already secured the first customer and are aiming to get another one. So we're partnering with one of the big four consultancies in the Middle East to get into those banks. So we first try to test the ground through some partners and then invest into the market, but also we, we are started investing into some kind of thought leadership, being more active in the industry events because we're more or less focusing not that large amount of people globally, which is quite specific niche, but we try to position ourselves as kind of uh, the like thought leaders in the area when we talk when we talk about interchange, skin fees, and card profitability. Great, uh, thank you, Kirill. Any other questions? Okay, then moving to the next presentation, which is from Dix Fact. It is a US-based startup offering a Gen AI-based product, the Precox, that prevents financial crimes before they occur. And here we go. Hi, everyone. My name is Nishan Tomar, and I'm the founder and CEO at Dix Fact. Um, if you have seen the movie uh, Minority Report, uh, where they use the Precogs uh, to basically stop any murder or other types of crime before they happen. We have taken the similar concept and brought it to real life in the context of financial crime. The problem is that the financial crime keeps uh, getting bigger and bigger, even with all the existing solutions that are in place right now. And this poses a huge uh, financial uh, uh, risk for individuals as well as businesses. And it also uh, is a threat for the reputational damage of financial institutions. If you look at the trend in the last few years, you will see there is a, a, you know, a rise in numbers in both the number of incidents as well as the financial cost associated with these uh, fraudulent uh, activities. And the problem lies in that most, if not all of these solutions are trying to leverage identity-based verification and detection, which is not wrong, but it doesn't cover all of the scenarios. 
Um, the famous 2017 Equifax breach is a very good example where personal data of 147 million individuals was stolen. And then it was used across so many different fraudulent uh, activities they were, where they were able to evade the existing safeguards because these were identities of normal people like you and me. And so we have taken a very different approach where we are looking at catching these cyber criminals and stopping the financial crime by using transactional data and staying away from any uh, personally identifiable information. We have also kept the solution super fast so it can be incorporated in, in as fast as real-time payments because it takes less than a millisecond for us to detect a potential financial crime. Um, and we have used Gen AI to basically keep our model always evolving and uh, be able to predict the, the new crime patterns and techniques that will emerge in the coming 6 to 12 months. So we have basically two distinct models and the way uh, we have leveraged a generous generative adversarial network to detect financial crime, we have a very high accuracy of 99.7% with a near perfect F1 score of 0.975. Another major differentiator, as I mentioned earlier, is it's super fast. It can be completed in less than one millisecond. But the fact that our model can automatically evolve and update without any human interference also plays a huge role in keeping the cost super low in the ongoing maintenance of the model. And then last but not the least, because we're taking a privacy preserving approach, this can work on a 20 year old individual who has no financial history or track record but if they try to do a fraudulent transaction, our model will be able to detect it. Here are just some of the common use cases which uh, uh, you are already aware of. Again, this is not an exhaustive, exhaustive list, but just uh, some of the most frequently occurring use cases. And uh, just to give you a quick, I quick idea of how our solution works, basically at the beginning of any transaction, whether it's ACH, wire, credit, debit, uh, or uh, real-time payments, or any other, um, our AI models look at the transaction data, and if everything looks fine, the transaction continues as normal. But if there is, if either one of those two models can see a potential threat, then basically the transaction is put on hold and the data is sent over with explanation to the financial institution's investigation team for further actions. At the same time, the data is also fed back into our model for the constant uh, update and evolution of the model. With that, I'd like to thank you all. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at this email here. Would love to talk to you if you're interested in learning more. Thank you so much for your time. Perfect, perfect. So yeah, uh, we have Nishant here to answer your questions. Mahendra? Yeah, Nishant. So um, I just wanted to see how are you looking to apply your solution for more complex cases, say for corporate cross-border payments and also for, say, complex trade finance transactions, which where there is also the potential of fraud actually happening. Just wanted to see how you have thought about applying your AI-based capabilities on these use cases. Hey, Mahindra, yes, thank you for, for the question. Actually, our, our solution is currency agnostic, so it works for cross-border payments as well. Uh, it actually works for not only digital even, uh, fiat, but also for digital uh, currencies. So yeah, it works for cross border. Hopefully that answers. Great. Um, we can have one more questions, either, either one more question, either from Samir or Somia. Okay, maybe I'll uh, go ahead. So okay. thanks for the presentation. Just to inquire regarding the integration facilities uh, that you would have, say in typically in a bank's ecosystem, what are the inputs that you would need and what kind of output and which teams in particular, is it only the compliance teams that would be the recipient of the output that you would have from the platform? So in terms of input, it's it's uh, various aspects that are typically included in any typical transaction data. So things like you know time of the transaction, amount, the senders, nature of the business, zip code, if it's cross-border, then same thing about the recipient, right? So on and so forth. Again, we stay away from anything that is personally identifiable information, but everything else that is part of the transaction, our model looks at that. Uh, the output is actually available in terms of what factors played a role if a potential, if a transaction was flagged as a threat. Uh, and that is typically given your right to the compliance team, but it depends on institution. It may be some other team. Usually there is a team that looks at these kind of things for further actions. So we can export that explanation in any format, whether it's Excel, PDF, um, or something else. 
Okay, Perfect. thank you. Great, great. Uh, Samir, can we have your question in the chat section, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, uh, Samir. So moving towards the next presentation, which is from Cogni. It is a Canadian startup using AI to transform the mental health insurance space. And here we go. Hi, my name is Emmanuel Michel. I am the founder and CEO of Cogni. I am a PhD candidate and I am on a mission to work alongside insurance therapists and training providers to make mental health and well-being accessible, equitable, and empowering for everyone. Mental health is a growing global crisis affecting over 1 billion people worldwide. This poses a significant challenge for both insurance companies and mental health providers who face capacity constraints, challenges, and are limited in terms of tools that they can use to measure their service effectiveness, especially when it comes to the virtual settings. There's an urgent need for more personalized real-time data to help providers make more informed decisions. The world market opportunity is over 300 billion, but we will start by focusing on 2 billion for North American market. We'll focus on insurance providers and other type of therapists. Our objective is to expand to the world after meaningful traction. We have captured 5% of the near-term obtainable market. So what is Cogni? Cogni helps providers deliver instant eight-dimensional reporting and virtual summaries, enabling also providers to offer a comprehensive suite of tools, monitor clients' progress in real time with data to boost outcomes, identify issues through personalized data analysis to provide actionable feedback for next step guidance. Before starting therapy or obtaining a session, use a complete intake form assisted by our avatar, who also suggests one-on-one -on -one or group support for a deeper understanding of their needs. During the session, Cherry Note AI captures users' reaction in real time, like you see with the avatar showing on each individual screen, so that it can help providers make more informed decisions in real time. It also analyzes engagement and group dynamics. Then they can select the templates that they want for their report. The report will provide the dimensions that were discussed within the session. Our key differentiator from existing solution is that we prioritize proactive health measures by focusing on preventive care versus reactive. We are affordable compared to competition and we provide data-driven insight for decision-making and real-time video-based sentiment analysis without storing any facial data or audio. Our targeted clients are insurance providers, uh, therapists, and training facilitators. Our business model is SaaS, B2B, and also to c with pricing ranging from $10 per user per month, scaling with volume. We already have traction with significant revenue since our data launch and we've signed two contracts at end of 2023. We also have four letters of intent from different groups in the US. Our goal are ambitious. By the end of 2024, we aim to reach 500,000 in revenue and double by 2025. We are currently raising a round of 2 million to secure pilot and expand in new market build our team and invest in sales and marketing. And our aim is to achieve an annual recurring revenue of 1 million by 2025. So our team are subject matter expert. I bring many years experience in mental health. Our team is composed of AI uh, expert, computer vision, software development, and healthcare professionals who understand the complexity of mental health. We have a team of advisors from medtech to doctors and research analysis. Thank you. Great, fantastic. So we have Emanuela from Cogni to answer your questions. Should you members, any questions? Uh, I have a question uh, about the accuracy of um, the uh, facial expressions. Yes, right now we are at about 93% uh, accuracy. Um, for sure that we are, um, we have not uh, um, used that feature yet with uh, many groups. We have a pilot set up for uh, the 27th of October and uh, 
17th of actually the 17th of September and 27th of uh, October to test that exact feature because we have a potential client that is very interested in the training sector and uh, in the US. So that's the feature. We've tested it with in-house with uh, uh, existing uh, data, but uh, we are now going to be testing it with real-time uh, clients for groups of from 12 to 40 uh, people. Great. Deepak, okay, yes, uh, Deepak. Yeah, sorry, I'm not able to raise my digital hand, so I relied on the physical one. So one question I have is uh, typically what happens when we get into the mental health domain and let's say we are providing any advisory based on automated uh, AI tool, there might be some legal repercussions on that. So how are you handling that? Yes. So for that, what we've, uh, I've been in the mental health and you are right. I've been in the mental health for many years. And what we've realized when we went through uh, uh, the compliance is that our tool needs a professional to uh, validate. So the fact that we're not just letting the AI make decision and decide on the patterns, uh, we have professionals. Before you can download a report, the professional has to give their okay, then the report can be downloaded or else you cannot download the report. You, um, also, we don't use, uh, we started by using more machine learning and we don't use unstructured data. So like the cluster, for instance, because we want to make sure that it's directed. We teach the AI in which direction we want to go so that when we have enough data, we are able to now allow it to say, okay, from the data that we receive, those are the, the patterns and the trends that I've noticed so that it can make, it can go faster after. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, moving to our last startup. Uh, last presentation for today, which is BX Lend. It is a Lithuania based crypto license exchange. And here we go. Hi, I'm Kevin. Hi, everyone. I'm Safi. We are a new generation cryptocurrency bank. We make it easy for our customers to buy cryptocurrency with Euro and provide them with a credit card to spend and finally withdraw money at an ATM using our credit card. Many crypto exchange offer cryptocurrency trading, but are not really completely legal and safe to offer trading cryptocurrency. BXLAN solution allow to legally trade cryptocurrency through bank deposit without to, the need to convert USDT back to fiat currency via P2P. As an exchange holding a cryptocurrency license in Lithuania, we allow customers to use the Euros SEPA's fast transfer to provide customers with real-time deposit and withdrawal without go through P2P. So in a sense, we truly allow customers to enter the cryptocurrency market safely and legally. So we are currently in final stages of our testing phase, and I would like to give you an overview of how our system works. So let me walk you through a journey, a user experience when they come to BXLAN. So when a user registers on our platform, their wallet is immediately created and protected by CryptoAPIs, one of the most trusted and secure blockchain infrastructure providers. This partnership ensures that all wallets, transactions, deposits, and withdrawals are safeguarded with industry-leading security protocols. With CryptoAPIs managing the backend, users can be confident that their assets are well protected from the moment they sign up. Once user has set up their account and is ready to place their first order, our platform ensures that they get the best prices and access to deep liquidity thanks to our partnership with Birchstem. This means that every trade is fulfilled with Birchstem's fast liquidity pool, ensuring competitive prices and fast execution, making our platform ideal for both beginners and seasonal traders. Beyond trading, Bixland offers our very own Bixland token as well which is deployed on Ethereum blockchain. This token plays a central role in our ecosystem. We are excited to announce that a portion of these tokens will be distributed in an initial airdrop campaign. In short, we have built a journey that is secure, efficient, and rewarding, backed by top tier partners like Crypto APIs and Bristam. Our goal is to create seamless experience for from registration to everything, while also offering unique value through our baseline token. 
Market size of the projected crypto trading volume in Europe for 20 and 24 is 4.9 trillion, expect to grow 50% to 7.35 trillion by 20 and 25. BXLAN focused to serving European users with competitive offering and aims to capture 0.05% serviceable, obtainable market share in 1.5 billion by 20 and 25. Our business model is B2C. This revenue model charges 0.09% commission per trade, crypto withdrawal fee for US dollar, ATM cash withdrawal 1%, and crypto borrowed 2% APY. BX Land strategy partner with crypto major market leader include Crypto API, Bistem, Arbor, Chasra Earn and Revlo with over five years experience in crypto industry ecosystem. Our goal is to afford BX Land into a crypto bank in European market, convert crypto to your physical life from trading, consumption, saving and borrowing to cash withdrawal all in one platform. Contact us now. Amazing. So we have Kevin to answer your questions. Do you remember? Any question? No questions. Okay. Uh, so I, I know. I, uh, I have a question, yes, uh, Madhu. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So with respect to the crypto world that we have seen in the last couple of years, I think a lot of banks have tried to experiment in this space. While uh, most of them, I think on the adoption, they have not been, it has not been great. But yes, from a FOMO perspective, like they have uh, experimented on this. So how do you, uh, my question is like, how do you see the challenges from a regulatory aspect to roll this out to a wider audience and include in uh, the market? Kevin? Can you hear me? Kevin, are you? Yeah, 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 yes, I'm, Kevin. I'm here. yeah. Your question is asking the bank will be involved to crypto industry. How how shall we solve this issue, right? Yes, and, and plus to uh, and plus to understand like some of the regulatory challenges that you would see uh, in the region. Yeah, most of the bank, <laughs> yeah, this is a Good question. You see, before the bank is uh, afraid of cryptocurrency, but right now they turn they turn to crypto industry market. That means crypto crypto trading is the future. So <clears throat> first of all, we need to uh, we have license in Lithuania, and we need to uh, cooperate with the uh, with the license banking. We need to offer. We have uh, on hand solution is uh, we have uh, Weblu as our as our banking provider. So we can <clears throat> implement the API to offer it, to offer the Euro deposit and withdraw in stand. That means we add to we add to the digital banking finally <clears throat> because because we can in, integrate the API for the digital banking. So so finally the customers will be trade crypto deposit and withdraw in stand. After that, so which is same with the bank, but also, but uh, again, we doesn't have the banking license, right? We are focused to the uh, crypto convert to fiat. Okay, thank you. Just being aware of the time as well, Madhu. Just kidding. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Samia, and thank you, Kevin. Uh, so yeah, that that was a mar marathon. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, all these startups for these amazing presentations and jurors for drinking from the fire hose. Now, I've, I would request all the jurors to share their insights on one or two startups that stood out from your perspective. So, shall we start from George? Or maybe uh, Sora? Yeah. Me or sorry, sorry, sorry. I never. I don't know what you're pronouncing. Sorry. Uh, Sarah, please go ahead. Um. So for for me, um, just selfishly, um, because I'm in in the in the banking and and payments space, um, sort of quite interested on what um, 
Tig's fact and Taurus have to say. Um, that being said, I've got quite a lot of experience in sort of the carbon emissions calculating. So um, I was very interested um, to to hear um, from um, from that team as well. I think pitch wise, um, the best one and now the name I can't remember is the team in the uh, in the states um, that did the video with several of them speaking. And now I just can't. I, I need to get the name up. But, um, exactly. I thought that was that was excellent and very engaging. Um, but yeah, that's that's um, that's it from my side. Great, great. Thank you. Thanks a lot for sharing your insights. Uh, Soumya, would you like to go ahead? Sure. So from my end, uh, I thought uh, the trace and the dispatch, so that particular, those two propositions particularly like uh, quite appealing because we're seeing a lot of revolution happening in the banking industry, particularly the payment and the fraud and the, those kind of areas. That's one. Uh, I was quite interested as well on the Cogni, that platform, because it is like something that probably has not, the world has not seen it, but in the coming uh, times to come, we probably are going to have a lot of this, uh, you know, like the mental cases and uh, how is it like this platform is going to solve those mental cases. So Absolutely. good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Soumya. Uh, Mahendra? Yeah, hi. I think uh, I found trades very interesting. I think, uh, I forget the name of the fintech, involved in quantum computing-based cryptography capabilities from a data perspective, I think that one. Uh, these two or three, I think, stood out pretty well. And uh, I think I did indicate in the polls in terms of which fintechs I personally would be um, looking to see if we can engage further in a discussion or a POC per hand. So um, those are my immediate thoughts. Perfect, perfect. Sounds great. Nitin? Yeah, I think firstly, it's uh, good to see everyone presenting and hats off to them for sticking around and listening to others as well. A few stood out to me, uh, Algogene, Autonomy, and Aries as well. So I felt they had certain things which stood out. And the good part is everyone is now talking about APIs integration. So mm -hmm. that's something key to me and looking forward to uh, probably linking with some of them. Great, great. Sounds amazing. Thomas? So I thought all of the uh, startups here represented really interesting niches and um, they're developing really uh, fascinating directions. Uh, the two that stood out to me, uh, more because of my own interest, were autonomy as well as trace. Um, for trace, uh, I've looked at a few startups recently that are trying to do similar things uh, to process unstructured data and try to make sense out of just a lot of data to, to feed risk analyses. So I think this is uh, another strand uh, in, in that trend. Uh, very interesting to learn more. And then for autonomy, uh, I think uh, they've really come across a really uh, large but underappreciated niche. Uh, particularly in an industry that is not very well digitized today. So uh, quite interested to learn more too. Great, great. Uh, Viren? Hi. Uh, I think all the startups uh, I liked because they focused on a specific problem, each one, and not try to you know, uh, absorb too many things. Uh, so I like the focus of each startup. That, was, that really stood out to me. Among all the startups, I think I have a specific interest, I would say, in in Aries applied technology because of their focus on quantum resistant algorithms. Uh, I would like to know more about that. Uh, and I, I, simply because also I don't think organizations are waking up to the reality of how enormous that challenge is to switch to quantum resistant algorithms. So I think that is a great potential in my view. The second one is Velotix, uh, which serves as an access management platform, as I understand, bit of. But I think there is a great need for that platform as well from a data security standpoint, because of the amount of data we today play with, whether it is uh, internal, external, including mm -hmm. social networks data. So I think that, and with the use of AI, uh, I think a product like Velotix would stand out. Those two things, and there are there is a great potential for tokenize as well, in my view. Uh, we I just need to understand a little bit more details on that. Uh, but technically, yeah. 
tokenization is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Uh, thank, thanks a lot for sharing uh, insights. Uh, moving to Samir. Uh, I think all the presentations were very good. Uh, a lot of good results, uh, good ideas, amazing innovation happening in BFS space and makes this space really, really exciting. The three I'm going to name are more because of selfish interest, because I the kind of work I do, I see immediate use cases. So one is Dixfect. Uh, mm -hmm. The kind of outcomes you're showing, uh, Nishant and team are amazing. Uh, and this is a big bugbear now in the finance industry, especially banking, uh, how to manage fraud and how to manage scams. Uh, Tracy is another one. Again, uh, how, do, how do we use unstructured social data for credit underwriting and uh, mm -hmm. Volotex? So, in fact, politics, I'm already talking to uh, Amir and Uriel and the team because I have already a use case which I have uh, we are working with them. So yes, uh, overall amazing stuff, uh, amazing innovation which is happening. I'm very excited. It's great, great, fantastic. George? Uh, yes, all of uh, these <clears throat> startups or companies, uh, uh, they have a big potential, and but because... I'm focused on the financial industry. I would say, of course, Velotix. Uh, it's very interesting also, Olive Gaia, uh, because mm -hmm. ESG, I think, is a rising sector, especially uh, in Europe. Uh, Tracy, of course. And uh, last but not least, uh, Dits Fact. I think also this is uh, another sector that needs to be to get our attention because of... Uh, the AML uh, and the money laundering uh, issues that we need uh, as banks to take care of. So that's for me. Great, great. Uh, Victoria, maybe you can do a quick intro uh, since you joined late. So uh, yeah, just a quick intro and then uh, your top two startups. <laughs> Uh, okay, sure. Uh, apologies for being late. My name is Victoria. I work for Bank of New York. I'm actually a closet uh, founder, uh, having startups as well that I brought to market and currently building. Um, this was a very interesting uh, session, so thank you for having me. Uh, two things that stand out. The first one is um, autonomy. Uh, why does it stand out? It is in a space that needs serious solution. Um, traditional insurance have been addressing, like you know, the after fact, whereas they're trying to address. A more proactive, um, the more proactive side of, of that space. So I think, um, yeah, they're they're a startup to watch for sure. Uh, the second thing that stand that stood out uh, for me is um, Cogni. Uh, why? Because mental health is really becoming an important factor in our society, and um, there's very few people paying attention to it, and very few people that really takes it seriously. So if she's able or the founders are able to really get it right, I think there's a, a lot of uh, upside to that startup. That's right. Great, great, Victoria. Thank you. Uh, Deepak? Sure. First of all, thank you to all the 11 members of the team. I think it's a very good sporting number. Uh, thanks for bringing all this diverse set of uh, uh, startups today. Three that stands out for me and typically I will uh, say one from the business side I'll pick up is Velotex, uh, which is which is a nightmare kind of problem they're trying to solve. Uh, people are running behind like hundreds and uh, thousands of employees who are trying to manage just the uh, compliance and report to regulatory, uh, who has access to what, all those things. So it is definitely a good, good platform. And I quite like the idea that you can actually talk to your data and say that, okay, who have access to this data? or since when these guys have access to data, right? So the, that is pretty good. Two others more on the social side is uh, uh, one which is uh, capturing the ESG platform, which is Olive Gaia. I think this field is picking up right now. What is happening? We are not seeing a lot of action because hardly there is availability of data, but as data pick up uh, and, and uh, which is reliable also, the action we will see very soon. Third one would be Cogni. Cogni, again, as I think uh, we, we all of us mentioned that mental health is a uh, thing. But what important thing is, there is a still stigma associated in the society to talk about mental health. And people are still, even though they know they are not well, but they don't go to doctor for that thing. So I think this online platform will take away that kind of fear and stigma and pro probably they can manage their mental health better. Thank you. Yep. 
definitely yeah um next is daniel daniel um, would you like to share your two top startups yeah um i was taking notes <laughs> um yeah, thank you for the presentation uh, first of all the there was three that really stood out for me uh Velo uh Velotix, i don't know if i'm pronouncing it right um i thought they had a really valuable a uh, solution i love how any solutions that give you all all the information that you need to make an informed decision and uh, and it's just really quick yeah so i thought that they had a, a very valuable um um offering aries uh, iris iris and uh, the cyber security one that's an area that's exploding especially when uh, we talk about quantum and um so i thought it was really interesting and uh, i love seeing uh, this type of uh new technologies that are in the forefront of what's going to happen in a few years because it's coming we all know that it's coming and seeing that there's somebody already here yeah. with a solution um, is really good the other one that i liked because the market seems very big is uh, uh autonomy um it's um uh, that's an area as we as we grow and uh in our social circles and uh yeah, it move away after after covid it, we need packaging and the um, deliveries and uh, logistics grew a lot and there's not a lot of solutions like theirs in the market and i agree with uh, what they were saying about uh, focusing on the apac region uh this is the place to be uh, so so really like them as well Great, great, Dan Daniel. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> thank, thanks a lot, all the jurors, for sharing amazing insights and supporting this session. You are true champions of innovation. Special thanks to all these startups. We understand that it's not easy to condense all the intelligence within four minutes, but you did a miracle. Again, thanks a lot for your hard work and support. Last but not the least, many thanks to all the attendees for making it a successful session, right? Uh, let's let's connect with each other via email or LinkedIn and see how we can support the community and win together. All right, thank you. Uh, thanks everyone and see you next time. Thank you. All okay. right. All right, cheers. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you for organizing and hosting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.